Good morning, Gary. It looks like we have about 12 members on whenever you are ready to start. Okay. Yeah, I see You're 40 some start. people. Yeah, if we've got a quorum, we'll go ahead and get started. Okay. Yeah, you do. Okay. Thank you, Lisa. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Okay. Um, we'll go ahead and get the meeting started. Welcome, everybody. Looks like uh, winter's back for at least a day. <laughs> uh, so thanks for tuning in. Um, first item on the agenda is the ARC fiscal year 22 pre app announcement and program update. Kathy. Thank you, Carrie. Yeah, it's, it's that time of year again when Eastgate announces uh, the next funding round for our ARC program. So on our website under the home page or under the top news section, I should say, as Justin is calling that up for us, you'll find the pre-application period announcement. Those dates in which we're open is March 26th through May 11th. And this year, in the spirit of social distancing, we are going to do an all electronic format. So whether you're getting the instruction booklet or the application itself or the workshop, that will all be done electronically this year. The first date I'd like to make you aware of is our um, required workshop. And that is the April 13th at 1.30. Whether you've completed an application in the past or this is your first time, we ask that you please attend the workshop because this gives new information that the applicants are required to uh, put in their application. So it's to give you all the tools you need for a successful application. And this is a competitive process. Um, every year we usually have twice the amount of applications that we can fund. So I would encourage you to attend that workshop uh, please send me an email that you'd like to participate and I will send you the, the link so that you can join us on the 13th. And then uh, if your grant writer or you're not available on, at that date, just um, let me know and I can schedule an individual work session or we're going to record the uh, work, work session itself and I'll be glad to send you that. Then the second date I'd like to make you aware of is Tuesday, May 11th. That is when the applications are due electronically. You'd submit them to my attention by 3 p.m. on that date. And then once we receive the app, uh, your application, we'll send a confirmation email so that you know that Eastgate did receive it on time. In order for uh, projects to be funded through the ARC program, they have to meet one of our five goals. So our first goal is for projects that support our businesses and entrepreneurs so they can create and retain jobs. And then second, we want to make sure that we have a ready workforce. So that would be um, a healthy, skilled, and educated workforce, projects that uh, deal with workforce training or access to health care. That's uh, the category in which you would qualify for. Third is our critical infrastructure projects such as broadband, access roads, water, and sewer. And then we also look at projects that strengthen our uh, natural and cultural assets. Tourism projects largely fall into that category. And then finally, our projects that uh, help our leadership and community capacity. So those are broad. Um, that's why attending the workshop it is, is definitely helps you hone in what you need to have a successful application. And then as far as eligible applicants, um, pretty much any entity other than a for-profit entity can be a applicant for the ARC program. We do encourage public-private partnerships. It's just that the for-profit cannot be the direct applicant. However, they can be a benefit. So applicants who can apply would be your political subdivisions, such as counties, 
municipalities, cities, cities. Then we also look at our uh, educational districts, whether that is a community college, a university, or even a school district. Vocational schools can also apply. Public institutions such as our libraries and port authorities, and then the nonprofits. Each year, Eastgate gets a direct allocation, and that varies depend, depending on Congress and the Governor's Office of Appalachia. So we never know how many projects we can fund until that allocation is finalized. We generally know that about the end of summer, uh, early fall. But in general, our district receives about $800,000 to a $1 million every year. ARC does require a match, and that is dependent on your designation for the um, transitional counties, that is a 50-50 match. And for at-risk counties, that's a 70-30 match. That has changed this year. Uh, both Trumbull County and Ashtabula County are now at risk. So that means they can re uh, request a 70-30 match for, for their projects. Mahoning County is still deemed at transitional 50-50, and the maximum you can ask for is up to $250,000. So at the um, lower portion of the announcement, that is where you can see the, where you'll find the instruction booklet and also the fact sheet. That's just a one page flyer that kind of gives you a caption of everything that I've just talked about today. So if you have any questions about how to apply or where you're at and what type of project you have, feel free to reach out to me. Welcome to have you at the workshop. And then one other thing I'd like to point out today is on our website, if you're looking for more information, as Justin's pointing out under the regional planning section, that is where you find the ARC information. And we've updated some resources for you and that you would find at the lower portion of the uh, the screen there, here we are. Uh, that has our ARC um, strategic plan, the state goals. You'll find the booklet there, the instruction booklet. Also, our scoring criteria, fact sheet, um, just a wealth of information. But uh, feel free to reach out to me, and I, I can guide you through for the process. The last item I'd like to share with you is uh, I. I believe I mentioned last week, uh, every time we have a new president, we get a new federal co-chair. Tim Thomas has served us very well for the last four years, but we have uh, President Biden has nominated a new federal co-chair and her name is Gail Connolly Machen of West Virginia. She comes to us as a former educator and she was also the former first lady of the state of West Virginia. Her husband, you may recognize the name, that is Senator Joe Machen. So at this time, uh, Ms. Machen is being vetted through the Senate and pending their approval, we will have a new federal co-chair. So that is the information that I have for you today. If there's any questions, I'd be glad to assist. Okay, thank you, Kathy. Okay, next we have Murda. She's gonna give us an update on the transit. Come on. All right, I just unmute. Um, right, good, good morning, Murda. I wanna to talk to you about the regional transit coordination plan that's underway. We're developing this coordination plan uh, because it's a requirement of FTA 5310 program. As uh, most of you are aware, a lot of uh, FTA programs have long names and that program is called the Enhanced Mobility of Seniors and Individuals with Disabilities. So I'll just call it Section 5310 uh, in the near future. Um, what we have done so far with, we've had four stakeholder meetings our next stakeholder meeting will be on April the 6th of 2021. And basically th that is our steering committee. Next slide, please. We also had three focus group meetings that were held uh, for the general public to get feedback on the transportation needs and gaps for Mahoney and Trumbull County. 
what we're planning to do uh, with this information is is uh, develop strategies so that uh, we can go back and prioritize and look at these strategies, and we will have um, coordination strategies for the re for the region. Next slide, please. How we came about these strategies is we conducted surveys, and there were two types of coordination surveys that were conducted in the Valley. We had the general public surveys. There were two types of versions of that survey. There was a long version of the survey and also a short version of the survey. We were pretty pleased that we got 405 responses for the general public survey. Those surveys were also available in paper format in case anybody wanted an alternative form for the survey that might not have a computer. Um, there was also organization surveys that were conducted. We, we got about 65 organization responses. It's not what we anticipated. We would like to see a little bit more organizations out there and businesses um, that employ people that need transportation for individuals to fill out those surveys. So we are asking everyone if they know of a business within your region or an organization, have them fill out that survey. What we have also done is extended those surveys um, for April the 12th to get additional feedback. We are looking also at um, unrepresentative groups, minority groups that possibly didn't get the survey. And we have been working with WRT and some other groups to get that kind of feedback from those uh, areas. Next slide, please. Um, right here is the link to the surveys. You have the uh, public survey. Uh, this was also on our website. It will be kept open. It's in English and in Spanish. So those links are there. Next slide, please. What we also are looking at um, in the near future, which is coming up pretty quick, we're going to have our tentative completion date, our target date is May of 2021. Once we collect this data, put all the strategies in place, get additional input from the general public on the coordination plan, looking at uh, transportation providers, the private sector, surveys that will go out and what their needs are, or what they're seeing out there in the community. Um, we are also looking at developing an action implementation plan for funding um, those types of strategies and projects that come out of the coordinated plan. So any municipality or city, um, if you are intending on using or would like to request 5310 funding, for sidewalk projects as it relates to access to fixed route service, I would encourage you to fill out those surveys and state that for your area. There are a lot of, I, we've, we've done, Eastgate has done a lot of the assessment now on the missing links for sidewalks as it relates to transit. So if you can, please fill the survey out passed along, so those surveys will be kept open until the 12th. And that concludes my report. Okay, any questions for Murda? Okay, thank you, Murda. Next, uh, Justin will present the fiscal year 22 planning grant and the summary of funding recommendations. Justin. Thank you, Gary. Uh, so we're at that point in the program uh, where the scoring committee has done their review, um, looked through all of the applications that came through this program year, uh, and made their recommendation. Uh, so just a quick review of what happened so far. Uh, we had six full applications received uh, for a total grant request of $98,000, uh, which is the highest amount that we've ever uh, been requested uh, through this program um, in its three years. Uh, so initially we set a $30,000 program allocation uh, to kind of ease the burden this year. The scoring committee um, requested uh, and, and asked if we could increase that allocation. Uh, so that did get bumped to 40,000. Uh, and as a result of that, the scoring committee has recommended funding three projects. 
Uh, so I will pull those up right now. Uh, so you'll see the city of Canfield's Cardinal Connector Plan uh, was recommended to receive uh, the full $9,000 that they were requesting. Uh, city of Youngstown Center City Pedestrian Wayfinding Kiosk Strategy, uh, which has ties to the uh, Smart 2 Network project that's ongoing, uh, was recommended for $10,000, which was the full request. And uh, the City of Youngstown and Boardman Township Joint Application for a Glenwood Avenue Active Transportation Improvement Plan uh, was recommended to receive 21,000. Uh, that project did ask for 30. Um, so the scoring committee wanted to stretch this funding and, and really get a good return um, on what this program uh, can facilitate. Uh, so uh, offering partial funding to this project and, and working with the project team, uh, they have uh, indicated that they're going to accept that offer and, and make that project whole. Uh, through other means. So uh, three projects, uh, $40,000 um, in, in total grant request being recommended to be doled out here. Uh, and today uh, the committee will see uh, this resolution come before them uh, for consideration. Uh, that'll go through kind of our process that we've been uh, proceeding with for the past um, almost a year here where uh, th this will get voted on through email. Um, but if anybody has any questions about these recommendations, um, about the scoring committee and scoring process, uh, happy to answer them. Okay, thank you, Justin. Okay, next Stephen's um, gonna update us on the 2021 Transportation Improvement Program and uh, discuss a highlight of uh, recently sold and awarded projects. Stephen. Uh, thank you, Gary. Uh, yeah, this is something that we do as an MPO. Uh, we're required to complete this document and every year that we don't conduct a, a new tip. Uh, so this falls in line here. Uh, and, and like Gary mentioned, what this does, it highlights projects that were sold or added to the tip uh, in the recent fiscal year. So going back to July 1st of 2020, uh, all the way through June 30th of 2021. Uh, this one is unique that we don't have any added projects. Um, we don't have any new projects since July. Just kind of works out with how we uh, how we had our program set up and we're able to fill out um, all the way through fiscal year 2025. Uh, so I guess starting here, you guys have these tables uh, sent to you. It's, it's up on our website, on our transportation page, as well as in the library. Um, these tables, this is showing all the all the projects that were receiving some federal dollars and were sold uh, in those dates that I mentioned, uh, first in Mahoning County and then in Trumbull County. Um, you'll see the maps that coincide with these tables. Um, I know it's it's difficult to read the tables on the screen, but the maps kind of give you a good idea of, you know, we, we had a good spread of hitting all areas of the two counties. Um, we do all kinds of projects, uh, majority resurfacings, uh, but we have some bridge replacements here. Um, some new sidewalks, replacing sidewalks, uh, some of the stuff you'll see on on the state routes, on the interstate. Um, ODOT does a lot of chip sealing, uh, crack sealing, uh, slot paving, guardrail replacement um, through various locations. So, so you'll see a lot there that you don't typically see through through our programs here at Eastgate, but. Um, just to mention that those get federal dollars as well and the state's doing doing the work there. So um, check these out. Like I mentioned, it's up on our website. Uh, if you'd like me to send you, send it over to you via email, uh, send a copy over to you. Um, that's about it for me though. Okay, thank you, Stephen. Okay, next Luke's gonna discuss the ITS architecture. Luke, good morning. Uh, morning, Gary. Uh, thanks and morning, everyone else. Uh, so, as Gary mentioned, I'm going to be giving everybody a quick overview, overview and update of our ITS architecture. Uh, so, real quick, looking at the, the screen, uh, some of you may recognize this image. This is our old and current um, ITS architecture website. The last time it was uh, updated was in 2014, and it was originally created in 2010 by uh, HNTB. Uh, you can see down in the corner. If you could go to the next slide, Justin. Now, I don't expect anybody to squint and read this. Uh, it's it's kind of hard to see some of it, but this is a list of the stakeholders 
from 2014 and um, past. So we plan on updating this list to get a more current and, uh, you know, fresh, fresh list. Um, if anybody has any new contacts for ITS or has any recommendations for who should be on the stakeholder list, please feel free to email myself or Ken or Ed. Uh, we'd be happy to include those. So some of the um, stakeholders on there are City of Niles. Oh, sorry, Justin. Uh, City of Niles, City of Warren, uh, Youngstown. Next slide, please. So this slide is a list of past projects. Um, these projects will be a big part of the new update because we'll be reviewing all past past ITS projects, relevant plans, studies, and reports. So that means we'll be looking over TIP projects. We'll be looking over the corridor studies, the build grants, anything that can help identify current and future ITS assets in the region. And so some of the projects, the first one, City of Newton Falls, uh, signal preemption. You can go to the next slide, Justin. Uh, Mahoning County, Trumbull County's uh, commercial vehicle operations, just some of the, the past projects. Next slide, please. Just more of the projects listed out. I put some of them on there. So the big thing um, is that we had our kickoff meeting for our new uh, 2021 ITS update that is with AECOM and Drive Ohio AECOM. They're going to be uh, doing the bulk of the work. Uh, so this new update has two major tasks. Task one, AECOM will be converting our past ITS architecture from Turbo into RAD at nine, and that is going to be updating it to the current uh, CV AV architecture. So there's a lot more that goes into that, but that's just the simplest way of uh, putting it. So task two, this is where we'll be reaching out to communities and this is where you guys will be getting involved. Uh, we'll be putting out a survey and the goal is to gather information on transportation problems and needs. The second part of task two is the stakeholder meeting and we'll be facilitating this um, to go over and review the update. This meeting of course will be virtual. And then the final part, is uh, we're going to get a new ITS document and a new ITS website. And AE AECOM has um, said that this is going to be all user friendly and, you know, everything is going to be easy to go over. And then next slide, please. This is a schedule of how um, AECOM plans to go throughout it. So it's going to start uh, at the beginning of this month today. And then it's going to end uh, at the end of October. So the only thing that you guys really need to worry about is the stakeholder engagement, which is projected to go from April 26th to around September 15th. And then right when we get uh, the information on when we're going to hold that stakeholder meeting, we'll send out all the information so you guys uh, can RSVP and, you know, be up to date on everything. Uh, next slide. This is my contact information. Uh, if you guys, you know, need anything or have any questions, you can send it my way. Uh, and if anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. If not, that's all I have. Great, thank you, Luke. Okay, now we're all the way down to the director's report. Jim, good morning. Good morning, Gary. Thank you. Um, appreciate everybody taking the time to participate today and to thank the staff for the updates. Uh, I just want to let the the group know uh, we're targeting June 1st uh, as an opportunity to open the doors to the office. As you can see, and everybody is aware of, we've been operating uh, remotely. Um, some people have been trying to take advantage of the office and come in when they can, but we've been, the doors have been closed to the public. Uh, we will continue to follow the governor's uh, guidelines and, and um, health protocol, uh, but we're targeting a June 1st date to be back in the office. That's the Tuesday after Memorial Day, so we're excited. I look forward to, um, you know, once we get past uh, through this pandemic to be able to see and meet with people uh, in person and be able to have our tax and our general policy uh, boards, hopefully uh, in the near future, back to the way we had them in the conference room. And, and again, um, it, it's working as a WebEx call, but it's more, I feel it's more productive being able to see everybody in person, but uh, thanks for your patience on that. Uh, just a couple of uh, updates. Uh, I do want to I do want to call back uh, go back to the planning grant and thank uh, Justin for the uh, efforts and the uh, people that participated in that committee. Again, that that's made available because of some of the cost saving measures we've had and some of the 
uh, grants we've got through the last couple of years that we've been able to free up some money uh, and through the uh, CPG funding that we get and redirect it and reinvest it in our communities. And we're excited about that. Uh, it's difficult when it comes to uh, partially funding some because some of the requests have been larger than uh, the that the uh, funds allow. But uh, it's important that we recognize and I know justice do, does this due diligence to make sure that they, they have the match or the rest of that money to make that a successful program, uh, a grant as we move forward. Uh, but I think just want to kind of clarify that, but I, I most importantly thank the group for going through that process. Uh, they're all good projects. Uh, we hope to, uh, we're going to take a look and see if we can make that an annual program. Um, we've got to see where we line up uh, in next year's, uh, in the 20. 2023 budget uh, so to make that commitment, but our eyes are on that and we'll hopefully we're able to report more on that near the end of the year or 1st of next year. Uh, do also want to update. Uh, we still have our fingers crossed and hope to hear news on the ODOT statewide planning and research grant that we submitted back in January. Um, we we're told in uh, early spring. Uh, so hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we'll get some direction on that. And that's uh, money that we would be made available to. Uh, strategically analyze the Lordstown region. I and I like to say that uh, really our region, we kind of take a look at where we can go with the electrification efforts, the logistics efforts, uh, and, and really uh, build on the initiative and the investment that's made out there. So um, more to come on that. We would be looking to bring on um, a consulting team uh, to bring that technical expertise to the region and define uh, what really is the chase um, for the region. Uh, as soon as we hear on something like that, we'll we'll make that announcement. Uh, we are in discussions with GM on the community investment monies that's been made available to Eastgate um, through the uh, Development Services Agency in Columbus. Uh, that's two point five million dollar investment. Uh, we're supposed to uh, have some conversations, uh, uh, I believe, tomorrow. Uh, hopefully, we'll have a date when that money becomes available. But that again would be money that we'd be able to reinvest in the region uh, to continue to explore the initiatives from a regional standpoint. Uh, more to come on that when we get the money, uh, we'll roll out our plan then. Uh, the last thing uh, I wanted to talk about is uh, our regional utility infrastructure plan uh, that we're looking to uh, implement here in the near future. It may be part of the strategic plan, may not, may break out some monies from the uh, GM and community investment, but uh, we really see the need uh, for a regional utility infrastructure plan uh, getting communities to work together, uh, sharing the resources, sharing the revenues, uh, and make this uh, region more, um, I should say, shovel ready when it comes to businesses, um, really business attractions, supply chain. Uh, some lessons learned. Um, we think we can be collaborators, facilitators of a regional plan to get everybody to the table um, and, and really to move this region forward. I think that would grow into a uh, Zoning uh, regulations for these uh, pockets that have been identified. Some of these pockets that are being identified are also part of the GM recovery grant that we got that YSU is looking at uh, and identified really areas that we uh, can grow uh, if we can make them more shovel ready. And I think that's important. Um, so we'll have more information on that, but it's a great initiative that we hope to get underway here uh, before the end of uh, this fiscal year and in early summer. So um, a lot of things happening. Um, we appreciate everybody's time and patience as we all continue to work uh, through this pandemic and look forward to the light at the end of the tunnel and, and getting together again. So uh, that covers my update. I appreciate the time. Um, thank you, Gary. Okay, and thank you, Jim. Okay, that brings us down to the general policy board resolutions. We have three, four and five dash 2021 that will be emailed out to the TAC members for review and approval. Uh, so be watching for those. Um, that brings us down to announcements. Does anybody have any announcements uh, for the TAC committee? I have one. This is Joanne Isawine on behalf of the city of Warren. I was asked to let everyone know the RFP for project management for the Mahoning River restoration and the removal of the Summit Street Dam is on their webpage. It's on the city of Warren's webpage. If there's any questions, just let me know. Okay. Thank you, Joanne. Anyone else have any announcements for the TAC committee? Okay, there being no uh, uh, further announcements or any discussion, I wanna thank everybody for participating today. Uh, again, we, we had 40, some almost 50 participants, very successful.
as soon as we get used to these, we're all going to be back in the office, back to normal. <laughs> so thank you, everybody. Thank you, Jim, and your staff uh, for uh, facilitating today's uh, meeting. See everybody next month. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. Thank you. Happy Easter, everyone.